Hey everyone, my name is Ramneet Beniwal and I am currently an MSW student with University of Toronto. I'm doing my practicum at For a Safer Space. And today we will be talking a little bit about the book, Your Mind is Your Home by Cameron Beatty. Um, so this is his uh, book where he talks about how to end anxiety, uh, stop overthinking and have more control over our thoughts. So he provides a little bit of insight on uh, some coping skills that can be used, um, as well as why maybe um, we experience these things on a regular basis. Uh, so for today's presentation, we are going to be covering chapter one, uh, your personal profile. So there are currently five parts to the book. And uh, this chapter one is part of the first part, which is called the news feed of your mind. So delving into the chapter, the first introduction, he mentions a little bit about uh, the importance of mental health. And Cameron talks about uh, mental health in relation to social media, particularly, um, and how we are so quick to post something on Instagram, for example, or Facebook um, about a picture that, you know, we've been outside, maybe we had a good day or we're smiling in the picture, but we don't often truly share what's really going on in our life. Um, and so we, off, we project um, to, the, to society, to the world, how we wanna be perceived, but we never really feel comfortable sharing on social media how we're truly feeling. And we showcase this perfect life um, in pictures, despite possibly feeling pain or anxiety within, right? And so, this is his introduction to the book and why he's writing the book. Um, and he's saying that our, our mind is our eternal home. And the way we treat that eternal home is the way we are going to um, experience these thoughts. There was, um, he mentions a little a question about how would it feel for you to have more control and more ease and more relief mentally and emotionally. Right, so this is his uh, beginning of his book and this is exactly what he's kind of gonna get into um, in the remainder of the book. There is a quote uh, that really stood out to me even before the introduction and even before the chapter begins. And it says, let the life you live be a life that you can stand living in, in your mind. Allow the thoughts that you think to be thoughts that are comforting and loving, especially for yourself. Be open to trying again and again to access the many different ways that you can make things better mentally and emotionally for yourself. Detach from the feeling of being lost as you come to find the natural self-control that you can apply to various areas of your life. Encourage the space of your mind to be a place that is healthy and homely for your thoughts as a space in which those thoughts reside is your eternal home in this life. So this is even before he gets into the book and it really stood out to me because I started to think um, how true that is that, you know, the life that you want to live, you, you want to be able to stand living in it, as, at least in your mind, right? So um, the thoughts that we have, the things that we see, these are things that are consuming us. And if they're negative, then, you know, are they comforting? Are they loving? Are they, are they giving us that environment that um, we want to flourish in? So I thought this was a really great way to start the book. And he also gets into a question stating, if you were to lose everything and everyone from your life, if you were to have no home, no communication, no internet, no devices, no money, and no resources, if suddenly everything and everyone was gone, what would you be left with? And he says, my answer, your mind. So I'm going to leave that there for, some, uh, for everybody to think about because at the end of the day, our mind is something that we are always going to be around even when, even when we lose everything in our life, like Cameron says. So getting into his book, his uh, first bit focuses on what's on your mind. And he shares about a personal story um, where he opened Facebook one day. And as you open uh, the social media Facebook, the first thing it usually asks you is to post a status. Um, and the way it provokes you to post that status is by saying, what's on your mind? 
So Cameron shares a little bit about um, how that statement got him to start overthinking about what's going on in his mind. And once he started, he started to spiral. Um, you know, he said, I kept thinking, I'll never see the people I love again if I go um, get into a car um, because he was worried about getting into a car accident. Um, and he wanted, um, you know, he didn't want to leave people behind. So there was a lot going on in his mind. And he started to realize that he, he, he started to get self-awareness around the idea that he is becoming, he is spiraling. And so he says that it's once you can recognize that your mind is going from thought to thought to thought, um, it's that recognition can get you to stop the thoughts itself. So I thought that was a really great point that Cameron made. He says that our mind is a collection of thoughts, mini movies and scenes and a lot of inner chatter. And that's what ends up consuming us. His next, cha uh, next bit in the chapter talks about friends for life. And he shares that wherever you go, your mind goes with you and your mind is where the action takes place. So on page 16, um, he focuses on some questions that can help you um, to monitor your daily thoughts. So what do you start off your day by thinking about? What are your morning thoughts for the day ahead? Are your thoughts focused on what happened yesterday? Is your mind consumed with thoughts for pending problems? So he says, take a moment to just think about these things and it can get you to, um, it can get you to start having a more positive outlook in your day rather than um, replaying certain thoughts over and over again in your head. And one of the things he said, I'm gonna read this uh, on page 17 as a quote. You may be lying on the beach and as you scroll on your phone, you can become mentally consumed by the actions of those that you do and do not know. This devours your time, taking you mentally and emotionally away from the paradise that you live in. Your emotional mood and mental state can also be affected by the news and content that you read and no matter how calm the tones of the beach and water that surround you may be, you can end up filtering out such beauty from the journeys you drift off into your thoughts. And that got me thinking that there are so many times where I have personally done that and gone on a beach and you know even though I'm surrounded by such beauty I'll pull out my phone to check out social media and see what's happening with everybody else. And this really got me to think that I'm suddenly worried about what's going on in other people's lives when, you know, this was a moment of stillness for me and this should have been a moment for self-reflection for me. And um, all of a sudden, if I see something or if I read something online because I chose to spend that moment on my phone, my mind is somewhere else, even though I'm physically on the beach. So the point of being on the beach gets completely um, overlooked and taken away. So I thought that was um, very well written. And the last bit of his, this chapter talks about mind flicks, which is similar to Netflix. And he says, your mind can keep scrolling through the same thoughts, thinking about a person or a situation over and over again sometimes. So maybe if somebody's had a bad breakup or um, you know, any kind of concerns at work or with a coworker, and sometimes you continue to think about those thoughts day and night, um, and he's saying that there's a way to filter those and, um, you know, stop the negative self-talk, which is replaying in your mind, because it can like it, it can lead to mental and emotional self-harming. So this was uh, chapter one of your mind is your home, and I will be back next week to talk about chapter two and to continue with um, what Cameron has written in this book and to reflect on some of his concepts. Thank you.